In this lesson, we're going to continue looking at dynamic blocks. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to take an existing dynamic block, kind of like we looked at in a previous example or lesson, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pick it apart and, and use it as an example to see exactly how it was created so that we can learn from that block and learn a little bit about how we might can create our own blocks. This is a great way to kind of take something that somebody's already done, you, you know that it's working, and kind of uh, use it as an example to learn by. So let's get started. We're going to come over here. If you don't already have it, make sure you open up your tool palette. And we're going to pick this window block from the tool palette. And we're going to insert it. This is a very simple block. We can select it and we can see that it's a dynamic block because we have our, our grips or our, our perimeter control points. And we can see that we can flip the block. We see that we have the ability to stretch the block to make it a certain size. We have certain preset sizes that we can use. And um, we can also change the width of the wall that it's set in and things like that. And it again, it's a very simple block, and we might think that this could be just created in a number of ways. Um, but we're going to kind of take a look at what it's got going on under the hood, and that way we might can learn some things from it. So what I want to do is I can either double-click on it to bring up my block editor, or of course I could always select it, right-click, and go to block editor that way. Or I could have typed BE for block editor also and went and selected it. Okay, so... Here we see in a great example of using both some of our geometric constraints and dimensional constraints from the new parametric options in AutoCAD 2010. And we also see some regular dynamic block parameters and actions assigned that have been around for a little while. Now in the, one of the previous lessons we talked about creating some very simple blocks and how sometimes it's a little bit easier just to use the good old fashioned parameters and actions to do so. but we don't always want to create simple blocks. Sometimes we want to create some more advanced blocks and that's exactly what all these new features allow us to do. So let's just kind of see what we have going on here. First of all, we see that we have a vertical constraint parameter. It's currently drawn to four and this represents the width of the wall. And we see that we have the ability to stretch it to make it wider as the wall stretches. We also see right here and I'm just going to kind of move it over here so that we can see it. We have an equal constraint, and it's corresponding to, and again, some of these are on top of each other, so I'm going to move them around so I can see. And we see that what this is, it's saying that this line over here is to stay equal to this line over here. The line on the left is set by this vertical constraint parameter, and therefore as this vertical distance changes, this line over here will also. So that's a really cool way to use some of our new parametric tools. We see down here at the bottom that we have another geometric uh, or dimensional constraint, and that's for the, the width of the window, and it's currently set to 3 feet. We see that we also have a perpendicular constraint set to make sure that our lines stay perpendicular, our, uh, our vertical and our horizontal lines stay perpendicular. We see that we have a flip parameter. This allows us to flip the whole window and this is just a regular dynamic block parameter here. And we also have, if you look real closely, it's kind of hard to tell, but we have our horizontal constraint parameter right here to make sure that this is all stays horizontal, that this line stays horizontal right here. And another one that might be a little bit hard to see is that we have a, a coincidence set. Now this actually is one of those things that would have been very difficult to do in the past, but it's extremely easy with our new parametric features. And what this has allowed us to do is that we have a coincident setup, a constraint setup, for our horizontal line to always be in the midpoint of our vertical line. Now that's extremely important because if we go over here to test block, what we see is as we change the width of the wall, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We see that our line is staying centered on the midpoint of it. Now that's really important uh, for this block, for sure, uh, because we want to make sure that that happens. And it's done with a very simple, just a single parametric feature, the coincidence. Let's just kind of 
take a look at what we might would do if we wanted to add something to this block. Let's say we want to replicate the uh, coincident and the way that this line is staying aligned to the midpoint of, of our vertical line. Let's just draw another line. So I'm going to give the line command. And I'm just going to draw a line just kind of randomly right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the constraints on my block authoring palette. And I'm going to do another coincident. I'm going to pick my line at the end point, And then I'm going to pick the midpoint of my horizontal line. All right, so now that line will stay lined up with the midpoint of this line. So let's just test it out. Let's go to our test block. Click on our window. Move this over here. And as I stretch, we see that we're sort of working, but we're all, we also have a problem. My line did stay in the connected to the midpoint of my window here, but it's dragging it on an angle. So let me close that test block. And the reason is because we did not define uh, anything about this other point on the line or the, the relationship between this vertical line and this horizontal line. So there's a couple of ways that we could fix this. And again, we would, uh, we would come over here to our, our parametric constraints and we can either make, do a perpendicular constraint and make sure that this line stays perpendicular to this line. Or we could just use a vertical constraint and we could just tell it that this line always needs to be vertical. So that's what I'm going to do. And now we have a vertical constraint here applied to this line, which is connected with a coincident constraint to this line. And so if we do our test block right here, move this out of the way, drag, and we see that now our line stays connected and it also stays in the middle and it stays vertical. All right, so that's just one example of kind of taking a block, picking it apart, looking at how it's created, and it's very useful, especially if you if you have some trouble creating your own blocks. Things don't seem to work right and, and things like that. I suggest taking some blocks from these that, that's already built into AutoCAD, break them apart, kind of see how they work, then try to replicate them. Now, this block has some additional things that we're going to look at in uh, some future lessons, such as the ability to restrict the movement of, our, of some of these dimensions to where they ha have to go in preset increments. So we're going to look at that here in another lesson. But for right now, just know that you can always open up a block. You can modify it. You can break it apart. You can kind of see exactly how it's working. You might want to delete some of these different um, parameters that they have or some of the constraints that they have and see what effects it has. So it's kind of like reverse engineering the block. And sometimes that's some people learn better that way. So, uh, so I recommend that you try that out. One thing that you might want to do, just to show you another little trick, I can come over here and I can do a, I can save my block. I can do a save block as. That way I can give this a new name and I don't modify the original block in the drawing. Or I'm just going to go ahead and close out of it and tell it to discard. But whenever, I, before I even start it, I could have selected that block, right clicked on it, and I could have said to copy block definition and assign. And if I do that, then I can rename the block and I can tell it no for anonymous and I can actually give it a name right here and then I can go and edit that under the new name and the original block would still be intact. So that's a couple of ways to kind of do a little experimentation without worrying about messing up a block that's in an existing drawing.